Welcome again to Pete's Garage. No, it wasn't long after the invention of the self-propelled vehicle, and for that matter, the bicycle, that people wanted to travel at night. So they needed to solve a couple problems. A, to be seen, and to see where they were going. Let's take a look at some of these early lighting systems and see how they lit up their lives. The first adaptation for lighting was the kerosene lamp, which was in use in homes and various places. It was adapted to the car. Just an example of the one on the steam car here. It has kerosene. And there's a wick. And there we go. You could be seen, but you certainly couldn't see very far down the road with something like this. Now in an attempt to see down the road with one of these kerosene lights, they soon came up with the idea of putting a mirror behind the flame and putting a magnifying glass in front of the flame. Here's an example on this uh, early kerosene lamp on the steam bike. But that, that, that system didn't last very long because it wasn't very effective. In 1909, a Frenchman by the name of Louis Blériot entered the history books by being the first man to fly across the English Channel in his monoplane. But Blériot's flying was really just a hobby. He made his serious money by inventing the acetylene headlight. Now this stuff is called calcium carbide. As you can see, it just looks like crushed rock. Mr. Blario soon uh, figured out that he could use this to, uh, as a basis for his headlight. When combined with water, calcium carbide forms acetylene gas. Now you can imagine how much fun kids had with this stuff in the old days. Generator works. This is it. it. sits on the running board of the car. And it has a basket inside in which you put your calcium carbide. Water goes in this tank, sits on top like so. All fastened down, sealed. Then you turn on this valve. Whoops. So the water starts dripping on the calcium carbide. The calcium carbide fizzes, forms acetylene gas, which is piped through the hose to the headlights. Let's check it out. Now if you take a look at these headlights, you'll see that inside we got a concave mirror. Very thick glass because there's a fair bit of heat build up here, so the glass has to be able to take the heat. And the burner, it's shaped like a Y and is made out of volcanic rock, so it takes a lot of temperature. So we have to, if we got the acetylene cooking, which we have, take a little sniff. Oh, it smells kind of bad, so we know it's coming, so now we can light the lights. All set for nighttime cruising. Look at that blazing lighting there. Actually, acetylene lights are pretty good. Just a lot of messing around. Perhaps the cleverest acetylene lamp I've ever seen is on this 1912 FN4. It's a Luxor made in Paris by those clever Frenchmen again. It has two burners. One is on all the time, the other was, is regulated by this valve behind. So the second burner turns on and off 
So what this does is gives you high beam and low beam. Probably a decade and a half before the makers of electric lights came up with that idea.